In this video, we're going to prove a theorem in piano arithmetic using proof by induction. We're going to start with this definition, which appears to represent addition. Here, I'm using s to denote the successor function, and because we're dealing with piano arithmetic, all values in our domain of discourse are natural numbers. Our first rule tells us that if we evaluate the function with x on the left and 0 on the right, we get x but it doesn't tell us what happens when zero is on the left. Since our function is meant to represent addition and zero plus y equals y, we suspect that evaluating our function with zero on the left and y on the right should yield y. This is what we'll be aiming to prove. Please attempt the problem on your own before continuing the video. Assuming you've given it a try, let's proceed with the answer. If we knew our function was commutative, this would be an easy task. Of course, we expect our function to be commutative because it's meant to represent addition. But since we haven't proven our function commutative, we can't prove our theorem in this way. Also, notice that a zero never appears as the first argument in our definition. Therefore, we cannot reach our goal by direct proof, and so our theorem is a good candidate for proof by induction. The first step when proving by induction is to establish the base case. For our base case, we must prove that our function returns zero when both its arguments are zero. Let's start with the left-hand side of our goal. We notice our expression matches the left-hand side of rule one, so we apply rule one, and our base case is proven, easy as pi. For our inductive step, we assume the theorem holds for some fixed natural number, call it k, and use this to prove the theorem holds for the successor of k. We call our assumption the inductive hypothesis, abbreviated IH, as is tradition. We start the proof of our inductive step with the left-hand side of our goal. Having a look at our rules, we see rule 1 cannot be applied. Rule 2, however, matches our expression exactly, and so we apply rule 2. Notice that the left-hand side of our inductive hypothesis appears within the successor function. So we replace that expression with the right-hand side of our inductive hypothesis. We have now arrived at the goal of our inductive step. Since both the base case and inductive step have been proven, we know the theorem holds for all choices of y.